Has this happened to you? Hello everybody and welcome to the Black Bear Ivan Hobby channel and in this video we are going to turn the standard Assassin's Creed board game roof tiles into the sexy chat terrain pieces that will literally level up your game in a way that is fast, cheap and busty. If you're a fan of the Assassin's Creed games, you've probably spent countless and countless hours and hours and hours and hours with Ezio parkouring your way through the roofs of Rome and Venice. So when you got the board game, you probably felt that something was a little flat about your gameplay experience. I mean, the tiles look great, but it just felt a bit off, especially these ladders which, while awesome, would just randomly stick out of the table. So I wanted to see if there was a way I could add some of that verticality to my games. And while the community has been active and 3D printing files for the game have been coming up, I don't have a 3D printer or easy access to one. So that's why I thought to try and see if I could use papercraft terrain. Eagle eyed followers of the channel may even have seen it appear in my previous video. Whoa, 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 hold up. Papercraft? Isn't it like origami or something? Well, yes, but it's more generally a skill where you use paper or card to create three dimensional objects. I first encountered this technique when building stuff for more terrain heavy games like Infinity. More importantly, it is a cheap and inexpensive way of creating engaging and elaborate terrain for tabletop war games. Okay, but. I'm just a level 1 human with no skills. I didn't put any skill points in graphical design. Thankfully, there's this wondrous and magical thing called the internet where I was able to find a much more talented person who had already created some models that were free to download. These models were great and they had all this wonderful colour and detail that would fit perfectly with the game pieces from the Assassin's Creed board game. The only problem was they weren't exactly the right scale, so I had to go back and do a little bit of work for myself. So first I checked the tiles for the right dimensions and note that they are 10 by 10 cm squares and for our American friends, that's 4 by 4 inches. To create our cutout, we're going to be using this sophisticated image editing software called Microsoft Paint. So I go through the designs to try and find models that have an approximately square footprint. I end up using this one which as you can see has an approximately square shape and all the walls are of an equal length. So I take a snapshot of the image and copy and paste it into paint and at this time you might think that we can just simply stretch it out but nope, that would mess up the proportion. Life's never quite that easy is it? So here's what we do instead. I start cleaning up the design and removing all unwanted elements. Then I use the resize function to proportionally resize the design into a 10 by 10 cm space. You align the lines along the grid to easily check that it is indeed 10 by 10 cm. Okay, now this model does not have a flat roof, and while it looks awesome for dioramas, it would be a pain for balancing gaming pieces. So more expert editing is required. I copy the flaps and cut down the model by one level to make a flat roof. As for the roof itself, I go back to the PDF and copy out a flat roof image to paste into this one. Here's a hot tip, a cutout with a 10 by 10 cm footprint will just about fit into an A3 size paper and if you've done it right, you'll be able to print out your papercraft building on a single A3 size paper. I would also recommend that you use paper of a higher weightage, maybe about 150 or 180 GSM to give some rigidity and weight to your papercraft terrain. Now I've got all my images printed out, all I have to do is cut them up and glue them together. When cutting, always remember to be safe and that it is better to do many light cuts over fewer heavy cuts. Once it's all cut up, you can just fold it up along the seams and glue them together. When gluing, I like to use one of those dry glue sticks so that the paper does not get too moist and unwieldy. Here's another life hack. You can reuse all the waste paper cuttings by stuffing them back into your building. I use a bit to create some internal structure supports which really gives the paper model some sturdiness and the remaining bits are crumpled up to give some additional weight and bulk up the interior of the papercraft model. 
You can see that it holds its shape and can even hold some weight, which is gonna have to do when the alert state is red and the roofs are crawling with guards. I've also done a couple more designs so I worked through them using the same process. The links to the original files are in the description below and you can try making your own designs. If you've done this, feel free to share it with me and the community in the comments below. Otherwise, if you are like me, just an ordinary and casual gamer who wants a quick upgrade to their game, you can find the links to the models I've made at the link in the description below. And with that, quick and easy paper craft buildings are done! You can probably knock out all you'll ever need in an afternoon and transform your game into the multi-level experience it deserves to be. I hope you've enjoyed the video! This has been Black Bear Ivan, and thanks for watching. Brad.